shall rejoice and be glad in it. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a little tired today. Hallelujah. My body is tired. But you know what the Bible says? When the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing. So even though you're tired, when you begin to call on the name of Jesus, hallelujah, God begins to refresh you and download a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, just put your hands together because this is the day this is the day the Lord has made the Bible said this is a declaration I will rejoice not I might rejoice not I may rejoice I will rejoice and be glad in it we're going to go into prayer hallelujah glory to God hallelujah father we thank you today God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor, Father. We lift up your holy name, God. We magnify you for who you are, God, for what you've done in our lives, God. We thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sikhanu. God, you are God all by yourself, and we reverence you today. We love you today. God, we ask that you anoint us today. Come into the room, God. Be our special guest, God. Have your way today, God. Throw your weight around, God. Lord, be in every song, God. Be in every testimony. Be in the preached word today. Have your way. God from the pulpit to the back door have your way God come on in this room God you're invited in this place we lift our hands God and we open our hearts God and we're here to receive Lord we're here to receive from the presence of the Lord pour out on us God in the name of Jesus Whatever we're dealing with today, whatever we're going through today, whatever is trying to come upon us today, we bind every attack of the enemy. We come against every stronghold, every principality of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And we thank you now, God, that today, whatever we need, we'll get it in your presence. We'll get our joy today. We'll get our peace today we'll get our strength today we'll get deliverance today we'll get healing today this is the day God that you have made father and we shall rejoice and be glad in it God we thank you for all that you are going to do in our presence today we're expecting the move of God we're expecting you to move God we're looking for you to move God show up and show out God like only you can God somebody will come in today and their head will be bowed down lift their head up oh God somebody might come in today with a broken heart God mend their brokenness God somebody may be in depression today God deliver them right now Lord somebody may be sick today we pray now that your spirit will cover them in the name of Jesus we pray for all of those that are sick and afflicted we pray for those that are shut in oh God we pray for those that are in the hospitals we cover them right now we cover Cornell right now in the name of Jesus go to the hospital God sit on the side of his bed and breathe into him God healing and restoration we pray for Pastor Terry God we pray for her husband God we pray for healing right now God you do it today remove anxiety worry stress negative thoughts in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oh we thank you now 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 we thank you God we thank you God have your way have your way God today we glorify you 
and we ask God in your presence that you will forgive us of anything we have said or done that was not like you. We repent in your presence today so that your spirit can have free course in this room, God. Hallelujah. Let us come in for no other purpose but to praise you. We bind every spectator spirit, every demonic spirit that would enter in. We plead deliverance over it now in the name of Jesus. And God, we love you. We love you today. We love you today. Not just for what you do, but for who you are. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you're God all by yourself. You're God all by yourself. And we acknowledge your presence. How double so. We don't want to go without you today. Go before us, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as they did, as Israel did back in their time we do it today we send judah first we send judah first we send up the praise god we send judah first we send up the praise god we send up the praise for what you're about to do for what our eyes are about to see for what our ears are about to hear for what our hearts are about to receive we give you the praise god we give it up to you God we give it up to you God in the name of Jesus and we thank you now in Jesus name come on somebody help me say it in Jesus name come on you can do it in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name come on it's in Jesus name that we gonna get the victory come on it's in Jesus name that devil's gotta bow down it's in Jesus name this got to bow down. It's in Jesus' name. I know more so arthritis got to go. In Jesus' name. Poverty got to go. In Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. We understand what this is. Hallelujah. We know we in warfare. We understand the season. We know the devil is busy. We know he trying to attack marriage. He trying to attack our children. He trying to attack our money. He coming against our health. But we got the answer. We got the answer. The answer is Jesus. 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 We plead the blood. 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 And it is so in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together. Amen. Awesome. Powerful prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to do our scripture in just a moment, but I want to read a devotional I read this morning to bless your heart with today. So Willie, can you get our scripture on the board, please? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It says, learn to enjoy life more. Learn to enjoy life more. Relax. Remember that I am God with you. I crafted you with enormous cap capacity, with enormous capacity to know me and enjoy my presence. That is so awesome. When my people wear sour faces and walk through their lives with resigned rigidity, I am displeased. When you walk through a day with a childlike delight, savoring every blessing, you proclaim your trust in me, your ever-present shepherd. The more you focus on my presence with you, the more fully you can enjoy life. Glorify me through your pleasure in me. Thus you proclaim my presence to the watching world. That is so beautiful. I want you to stand for our scripture this morning. Amen. I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord once again. 
after church yes, uh, last Sunday, ended up back in the hospital again. <laughs> after the devil was trying to take me out, but God keep blocking it. <laughs> the more he perse persecute and press against me, the more I press into him. And I stand here as a living testimony that no matter what the image try to do to you, he can't take your faith. I love the song by Vanessa Bell Armstrong. You can't take my faith away. Because I'm mean, so true. The enemy wants to take your faith. Because you know, if I can take your faith, I can take your joy. I take your joy and take your strength. But when you know you got your faith anchored in Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what he do. Because I'm still going to praise him. I praise him on my deathbed. I still praise him. Because he's worthy of the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Amen. So our scripture, I want you to repeat after me. And Jesus answered saying to them, Have faith in God. Do you say have faith in the devil? Do you say have faith in your neighbor? He said faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have them shall come to pass Ye shall have them. He didn't say it's a possibility. He didn't say it's a maybe in the, in the factor. But it said you'll have what you say. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. Talking about you, here in this room, you listen on Facebook, you're talking about you too, talking to me. Whatever things of you desire when you pray, Believe, believe, believe that you shall receive them and you shall have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ordered against any that your Father, also which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And that's a true statement. Because unforgiveness will hinder the blessings from flowing into your life. Everybody in this room, God has ordained you to be a reservoir. You know what a reservoir is? It's a flowing pipeline for blessings. So when you walk in obedience to God's word, the reservoir begins to fill up. And it has to flow through you to her, to her, to her, to her, to her, to him, to her. It begins to flow. And everybody benefit from the blessing. That's why it's so important to stay connected to the shepherd in the house. Because when you stay connected to the shepherd, shepherd who has a reservoir in him it trickles down to you and it flows to everybody in the room praise God you may be seated I, I, I'm, I'm going to save that for later but I tell you God is so good because every time I look around somebody's gone look on the news somebody's gone children gone they ran away from home all kinds of stuff Thank you. goes on in society, but we got a Savior who keeps us secure. It doesn't matter about the wildfires in, in Maui, the wildfires in Canada, the wildfires in California, with so many different people who lost their lives. But every day I think about God. He sustained us. He kept us. 
It could have been you. It could have been me that could have lost my life. But because God kept us. Because he put you in a position of purpose. You know one, some, one thing we say on our prayer line every day of the week? We say, today is a great day to make it a great day on purpose. You catch what I just said? Today is a great day to make it a great day on purpose. Because you were created for purpose. With purpose. Everybody in this room has been created for purpose with purpose but are you going to walk in it is the question are you going to let the light shine before men they can see your good works and glorify our father in heaven are you going to be rebellious continue to walk in your flesh and deny him because he said if you deny me before men I'll deny you before my father in heaven so I want you to know today I don't want him denying me I, I tell everybody about Jesus because he's been too good to me. Father, I stretch my hand, if you know it, sing it with me, to thee. No Hallelujah, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. See, I don't know about you, but I got a reason to praise him. I got a reason to magnify him. I got a reason to celebrate the King of Glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right until I die. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right until I die. Amen, amen, amen. I hope that bless you this morning as it did for me. Now the praise team come on forth. Praise team, come on up. Amen. I come with the spirit of living God with fire on the inside, ready to let it out. Because God is doing a new thing in this season. If you don't pay attention, you don't wake up, you're going to miss it. Because too many people are sleeping in the house of God. And God is saying this morning, wake up, wake up, wake up. Come on, wake up, church. Wake up, because the Spirit of God is moving in this place. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, so good to see you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor. You look good. Now give somebody a high five, a hug, a smile, whatever, from across the room right next to you. Hallelujah. And then put your hands together in this place. Worthy to be praised. 
looks like. No matter what it feels like. God, you get the glory. You get the glory. Hey. God, no, he will. I know 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 he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He'll save your life. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Search all over, but there what? Nobody, nobody like you, Jesus. Like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Oh, when the doctors yeah. told me that there's nothing else they can do, I found out that there's nobody oh. what? Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. y'all know that when you're having a good time doing something the enemy's always plotting in the background mm. 
Somebody say, but God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the things that I've learned this week is that so many people take life for granted. As I was riding down the road and we had a, we had some hot days this past week. And I said, Lord, I'll take this heat over hell any day. So I took the time out and I told God, I said, Lord, I thank you. Because it could have been worse. And when we take life for granted, we forget to tell God, thank you. You don't got to have a reason to tell God, thank you. See, the problem is the reason why a lot of us take life for granted because we're always looking for a reason. Well, he hasn't done nothing for me to tell him thank you. Because my mom and daddy said that when somebody do something for you, what you tell them, thank you. But because God hasn't done nothing for me, why should I tell him thank you? We're taking that for granted. The thing is, a lot of us are delayed in our blessing is because we're not telling him thank you. I've learned a long time ago as a kid that tell God thank you even when you ain't got it. I learned to give God in any how praise. My car's not working, but I thank you anyhow. Hallelujah. The doctor said this, but I thank you anyhow. I learned to tell God thank you no matter what the circumstance was. Money, funny, change is strange. Anyhow, I thank you anyhow. Broken, battered, and bruised. Spiritually under attack, but I still tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Trouble on every side, but I still tell God thank you. See, the thing is, you're looking at the front of a cover book, a book. When you look at the book, a lot of us will look at the book and we'll start judging the book by what we see on the outside. So before you read me, see that's what I'm saying, a lot of people read into people but don't know the story inside the book. They begin to read what you're driving. They begin to read how you're living. They begin to read how you're dressing. They begin to look at all of those things. But what they don't understand is that what's beneath all of that is a broken person. Not just broken in today's term, but generationally broken. Dealing with strongholds and, and back up against the wall. When all the lights go out and all the doors are closed, uh, hallelujah, and the blinds are let down, hallelujah. You don't understand my praise. I put on this big band-aid just to, just to, just so people won't think this or that. Because it's not about what I have. It's about who I have. I don't think some of y'all caught that. It's not about what I have. It's about who I have in my life. It's a 
about who I have in my life. One of the most courageous things I was watching something on YouTube and I was watching it about how animals sought people for help and how they thank the people. There was an eagle that was trapped in the water. And I don't care how high you can fly, you have some kind of kryptonite. And you're going to need saving some kind of way. So it don't matter what level you fly on, when you get down here, you're going to need somebody to get you out of it. And when you're flying high and you find yourself in a low place, the only thing you can do is look up. So it showed a man reaching down, getting the eagle out. But most people, they'll be afraid of trying to save such mighty beasts or lend a helping hand to this big old bird. But he helps this bird out, dries this bird off. And one thing I recognize and realize is that after the bird has gotten dried off and got in a position that it can fly away. The eagle flew away for a little while, but he never forgot who saved him, who helped him out. So every once in a while, this man would see the eagle outside of his house. One of the things you got to understand is that we got to get in our heart that when we help others, I don't care who it is or what it is, you're helping God. Some of y'all didn't catch that. Whoever you help out, no matter who it is or what it is, you're helping God. When we pulled up early in the church, we came to the church and we pulled up and we saw, I saw Oh, you all park right out here by the table. And the first, and I had to ask God to forgive me because I wasn't sure what they were doing. It's right on the corner right here. Because sometimes people would dump garbage on the table. That's unfit for anybody to wear. And if I see it, I'll toss it in the garbage. So I was thinking that this person is there to throw, put garbage. I hope they ain't putting garbage out there. But the person wasn't out there doing any of that. The person was out there was going through the clothes that someone had donated for someone. And I said, Lord, forgive me, for I was quick to judge. And this is how, this is how you got to be in life, that when you begin to make accusations and you realize that that is not the truth, you got to be able to go back to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. That even I, as a leader, I have to go back and say, Lord, forgive me. I haven't reached that level of, 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 that level of anointing where I don't got to go back and ask God to forgive me. Hallelujah. I'm saying this to encourage somebody. Because no matter how bad your situation is, you may think the only thing that's going to happen is that it's going to get worse. Because all week long, it just got worse and worse and worse. Your house, not literally engulfed in flames, but it's on fire. Everything is going wrong in your house. Everything is going wrong in your life. But I know a man that who can fix anything. I know a man that can fix anything. And all you got to do is just be faithful and mindful that he's able. Somebody say he's able. To do a seemingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. 
Hallelujah. Woo. Man, y'all just don't know how grateful I am to what God has done for me. I'm going to share this with you then. We're going to raise the offering. I'm going to share, I'm going to share this with you because I want to let you know how great God is. God is so great that he will give you the knowledge to do certain things that you thought you couldn't do. And I'm the type of person, I'll try it to fix it. If it's broken, before I allow somebody else to do it, because I know the cost of what it costs. I have, uh, I have a few trucks that I have, and I drive one of them, and I got my nephew, and we got a third just in case one break down. And so to get the heater blower went out and went out in one of my trucks, but the rear heater blower worked, so that kept the whole truck cool during those hot days. So I was just riding down the road, just the front wasn't working. So ask the mechanic how much would it cost to fix that? You're talking two thousand dollars. Now, one of my trucks, the air conditioning compressor went out. It's been some hot days, and I was driving that hot truck. Y'all remember back in the days, drive 45 and you get that cool air. So as long as you're going down the road with all your windows down, all that air come in, amen. So I was driving that truck and to fix the air compressor, the air conditioner compressor, to put that in, the price was another two grand. Just almost a thousand dollars just for the air conditioner compressor itself. And then the labor. Labor can be $400 an hour. Some places 200 and they can charge you whatever. A tow, a tow truck just showing up, like I said last time, $500 just showing up. But I'm sharing this with you right now just because it only costs me my labor and $200 just to get the air, the, the heater blower done. Buy the heater blower and put it in myself. Two hundred dollars composed of two thousand. See, some of us we can fix some things, but because we got money like that, we can just go out and do it. I ain't got money to waste it on nobody. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I told my wife I was down there where the trucks was. I was doing some things, cleaning some things up. I got my portable power washer. And I bring a few buckets of water with me and I can power wash my own trucks and study paying the shop to clean those trucks off, which can cost almost $100 just to wash a truck. And they ain't going to take no straw brush. They just going to power wash it. I need you to put a brush on it. But anyway, so I told my wife, I said, if the air conditioner come in, could you bring it to me? And she said, yes. And so she brought the air conditioner down to me and I looked at the air conditioner I said Lord can I do this or should I pay the mechanic to do it and the Lord said you can do it and so I took the old one off I figured out how to get it off I had to google how to get it off because I was looking for the you know they got a tension belt on there I was looking for where to put that boat at, so I had to figure out where to put that at because I ain't know where. So I looked on uh, YouTube and they showed me how to get the boat to pull that thing down and loosen the belt up so I can take it off. So I did that, took the air conditioner off, put it back on. It took me 30 minutes, saved myself $2,000. Air conditioner compressor only cost me $250 on Amazon. I thank God for Amazon because you can find some things on there. Hallelujah. Way cheaper than it is out here. And this, these stores got it. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I'd rather keep my money to myself because those trucks cost a lot. To fill up, well, I'm going to put it like this. To fill up one of those trucks, and I'm sharing y'all's information.
because I know a lot of people have thought about getting into driving trucks and getting their own truck. It can cost you $600, $800, depends how big the tank is, $1,000. Just if, if you drive it all the way empty, <laughs> it can cost you all, all of that. And not only the diesel cost, but the death is another thing called death. You got to put that in. That's another four out of the gallon. So you got to be mindful of all that. And so when you're out there working, you got to make sure that you're working to make a profit and to be able to keep these trucks moving. And that's what I do. I know how to fix on cars. So I figured if I can fix on car, I can definitely fix on this truck. Amen. Somebody give God praise. And I, I just shared this with you, you know, not so much as the Bible says, if any man boasts, let him boast in the Lord because God has given me great wisdom in these things. And I love the Lord for telling me to pay attention. So if you're watching somebody do something, pay attention. I had my two cousins down here. They were down helping me out. And I decided to get off work, off the road. And came on down to the church and built the wall. And I told him, I said, pay attention. Because this right here will pay off in the long run. That's what I was told, pay attention. And so when I paid attention and I learned those things, I can do a whole lot of things that I ain't got to go and pay nobody else to do. And I love it when my wife said, I love your work. You did that thing, honey. She was like, you did that thing. And I said, oh, thank you. I just started blushing. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time to be a blessing unto the Lord. And also, be, while you're getting yourself ready to stand to your feet, I want to say to my father and my mother, you have the church's deepest condolences. From the, my father, my father-in-law just lost his mother. And we want to def we definitely got you lifted up in prayer and we love you. And even though your daughter's sitting in the back, she's supposed to be sitting right here. Go get her, mama. <laughs> That's why you ain't seen her. She, 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 <laughs> she said, I want to sit back here. But anyways, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. I want to thank God for Charles. Keep trucking it on down here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good, bro. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for Willie Davis, Deacon Davis, being back in the house on today. He said, Pastor, I'm going to be there this Sunday. And I said, great. And he's down here. And I thank God for him. Hallelujah. you, Jesus. I definitely want y'all to save the date for the 23rd, the 23rd, which is a Wednesday. I'll be ministering over at Manchild. That's Manchild, right? Yep.
Amen. I had a chance to talk to Maine on yesterday afternoon, and he was up eating. I think he had a cheeseburger, and we began to conversate about the burgers, and he said he don't like mustard. He don't like tomatoes. He like ketchup. <laughs> And I said, uh, I said, what, what you want me to bring you up that day when I come see you? He said, some chicken. And he said, KFC. Now, certain KFCs, I ain't going to put them down, but anyways. I ain't got much to say, but anyways. To each their own, amen. We got, we got our choices on places what KFC we would like to go to, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Starving like mob, and some of them I still wouldn't go to. Last place on earth to eat, still won't go to it. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I ain't gonna say it. But anyways, let's point our hand this way, amen. I'm ready to get radical because I'm believing God to do something big this week. When you point your hand this week, I want you, I want somebody to say increase. When you when you point your hand this way, say increase. Raise your hand, increase. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank and we praise you for everyone that had to give, and for those that didn't have to give but touched this basket anyhow. I'm asking God that you will open up windows, the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they won't have room enough to receive. Right now, in the name of Jesus, God, I'm thanking you in advance for the miracles and the financial blessings that are coming their way in Jesus' name. Now, bless this offering and purpose in which is going to be used in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Somebody say it's time to get radical. It's time to get radical. Time to get radical. Got a question for you. If you want God to do anything for you, what is it that you want? Somebody say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, enlarge my territory. Say it again. Say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Now, I got one more question to ask the believers that know God will do it. Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Give God a praise. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Announcements. Come on. You come on up. Good afternoon, everyone. God bless you guys. Yes, yes, yes. God is good. Um, 
um, ministers and deacons uh, class is every first Sunday from 10, well, at 10 from the pastor. On, we have an invite on Wednesday, August 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Redeemed Faith is invited to fellowship with, and pastor is asking um, that we show up at us. Well, he's going to be speaking, but we want us to come and um, support him at... Kibler, what's his name? Cedric Kibler's birthday celebration at 6091 North Tatonia Avenue. All the skit, um, I got time. We started our rehearsals for that. And those of you who are in part of it, I think she changed it from Saturday to Friday. Friday of next week at 5.30. Uh, church anniversary, um, Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church anniversary of September 3rd will be celebrated on, oh, is it is September 3rd, but will be celebrated on the 10th. The First Lady, Pastor and First Lady has invited us to, to their home for dinner. Um, I have a sign-in sheet. If you know that you're going, they want to get a head count. So if you know that you're going, what will you need to take to do us? Please come and sign up so that we can do a head count. You have up until August 20th. Appreciation will be Sunday, September 24th, during our morning service. Uh, and we'll, oh, the project, please do your part in helping in the project by the star, supporting it on Facebook, purchasing things from the vending machine, helping with uh, the fundraisers and everything, you know, uh, that you do, we appreciate it. Thank everyone for supporting the vending machine. I just said that. Hey, are there any announcements? I just want to make this announcement. Uh, we know that Pastor Terry is not here today, um, but she called me this morning and asked me to make sure that I announce about the SWAT gathering luncheon, which will be Wednesday at Omega's. So now I'm going to ask everybody, all the women that plan on attending, it's very important that we get a head count. We need to know who all is coming. So if you can see myself after service, inbox me, text me, call me to let me know so that we can add your name uh, to the sign-up sheet. We got to get this information in today. We also have a menu. So if you, um, once you see me, then I'll let you know what the menu is. You have to be able to pick the items so they can put the order in. We don't want nobody to come and not be able to eat what they want. Don't look at me, because my food gonna be in there, and I'm gonna be eating. So we don't want nobody to not have a plate, okay? So y'all, uh, please see me directly after service today. Thank you. Do we have any guests today? So these are your announcements. Oh. God in any way that you would like. Feel free to uh, join in in anything that we do. Thank you for coming. Um, th these are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand praise. Listen, before team come up and give another selection. We have a selection from our very own Prophet is Young. Give the Lord praise for her, Amen. First, I want to first I want to give praise to God. 
First, I want to give praise to God who's the head of my life and who's been watching over me, keeping me, holding me, and guiding me. And I, I want to say, I know I told y'all that God gives me songs to sing. So I sing them. And y'all love them. God is, he's so amazing, God is, he's so amazing. But I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I can't live without him. I, I, I can't live, I can't live, I just can't live without him. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise. He's so amazing. Let's give God praise. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this place. God is so amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. I was... Uh, Sometimes when I'm when I'm real tired, I get real jokey, and uh, and I can sound real convincing when I'm joking sometimes. <laughs> but right, Charles, <laughs> and I literally was joking with my aunties. They was all up here uh, working uh, down in the. Uh, with a clothes, getting the clothing and stuff ready, putting clothes out and um, redoing things from the block party from last week. I'm so tired that 
in my mind, my mind reverted to trying to stay awoke. So I started getting, you know, real jokey. So I told them, I came and I said, look, I said, somebody out there stealing off the free table. <laughs> and I always get Vivian, Vivian was like, what? And then she'll catch it. All, all, it take it about a few seconds for it to download in it. It's like, go on, Pastor. <laughs> And uh, I wasn't really being serious, but I was joking with my uh, two little cousins, and I told them, I said, I need y'all to count them crayons in that box. <laughs> Lord have mercy, they counted every crayon in that box, loose crayons. <laughs> Past this 100 and something. They gave me a number. I'm like, man, I was just joking. I, was, I ain't know y'all gonna really count them. I wouldn't. And so I was just, you know, just, and uh, I was joking with my wife, and I told my wife this joke. I said, look, honey, uh, I said, a dealership called and said, when fate paid for the car to get fixed, her money bounced. <laughs> I was talking about her cash bounced. <laughs> so my wife was trying to figure out how can her money bounce? So I had her going, they just had her going for a little while. Like, yep, they said her money bounced, her cash bounced. They're like, but she already paid for how they can call you later and say that her money bounced. I said, babe, she paid with cash and so she was like, go on somewhere. You're going to pay for cash and your cash don't bounce. Cash don't bounce. But anyway, I, I just, that sense of humor right there. You may find me that if I'm talking to you, I may, if I'm tired, I may joke with you. And that's just my character that I, if I'm tired, I'll joke. You know, I like to joke with Charles a lot. You know, I joke with my wife a lot. I joke with a lot of people that I'm close to a lot. You know, just to see their reaction. And uh, so if I ever get to joking with you, you know, I may just joke with you just to get your reaction. And if I, I, I left some people in limbo and they, hmm. oh, I told my wife, my wife said, uh, I said, it's Charles third. She thought it was your first. I said, this is his third neck surgery. And uh, she's like, wow. I like, and she's like, she said, what was different between this one? I said, they had to put a lock in it. <laughs> I, I, I told him, I, and she was really thinking, she's like, now, I didn't have a neck surgery, and they had to put a lock in my neck. Why they have to put a lock in his neck? So I had her going on, and I, I left it alone for a little while, and then she was really baffled by trying to figure out they put a lock in his neck. And, she's, and then, so I explained it to her, so I had to throw the curveball, because if I don't throw the curveball, she was really going to be thinking, like, trying to figure out, I never heard of, she probably started Googling a lock in the neck. <laughs> but anyways, I said, well, they had to put a master lock in his neck. <laughs> I said, because they had to keep the mother two connected, you know. <laughs> so, but, you know, it was just, I, I get to messing around like that. But anyways, yeah, but to God be the glorious. It's, it's always good for everybody to have a sense of humor and to be, you know, to be open and to get a refreshing, you know. Uh, it's just my way of just you know, letting a person know that, you know, trying to get a laugh out of you, you know. Even when Charles shouldn't be laughing, he shouldn't have been laughing. When I was making him laugh, he was up there laughing. I'm like, man, I made his throat hurt worse. I felt kind of bad. You know, you're in the hospital and you laughing hard, and all of a sudden, you're in there for a couple more days, and I feel like it's my fault. But anyways, 
It's all good, though. But let's give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. But look, I, I want to say this. I want to give you an empowerment moment before the praise team come up. And Charles is going to be preaching this morning. Amen. And if you need to tag out and tag me in, I'm right there by your side. Amen. But I know you can do it in spite of all of the neck brace and all that. But just don't, don't take it off right now. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. But I want to give you an empowerment moment. Before they the praise, y'all can just start coming y'all way on, making y'all way on up here. Amen. My empowerment moment is the deception on the inside of your breach. Now, everybody, whether you believe it or not, carries a breach. There's a breach, there's a breach that we all deal with. A breach is something like a crack. That's something that we tend to try to cover up, but every once in a while, we don't do a good job at it. And the deception behind it is that the enemy would allow you to think you have overcame a certain obstacle or you overcame a stronghold, but because the deception behind it, it looks like you're healed and you're delivered. And so you go on and you start doing day-to-day -day things and you realize that in that moment where you thought you were delivered, the enemy comes in and trying to bring up that same stronghold on the inside of you. Because what the enemy does is that he'll lay inside of your breach. And just because you think you're healed and you're delivered, you'll go on and you'll do things that you normally would do. But then the tragedy is when you are blindsided. And when you're blindsided by thinking that you are healed and delivered from drugs, alcohol, whatever the case may be, etc. And it comes up again. My question to you is, when your breach exposes your deception, I want to empower you that it ain't that you didn't use the right thing, you didn't pray hard enough. The problem is that there's always going to be a hidden, a hidden agenda, not only on the inside of us, but the enemy flares up on the inside of us. But the thing is, I need for y'all to do, to empower y'all, is y'all need to get rid of every agenda. Because if you got something that you don't really want to let go, that you are stagnant about letting go, you got to realize that thing is going to hide in that breach. And now you're going to blame God because you thought you were delivered. But God is saying, all you got to do is trust me and believe in your heart that in spite of this thing coming back up, that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I may got a breach in my spirit. I may got a breach in my mind. I may got a breach in my talk. I may got a breach in my walk. But I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And the power behind that is that we can put our hand on it to try to stop the water from flowing. But only the blood 
can stop it. I don't think some of y'all caught that. Because the thing is, is that when we become covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, no weapon that's formed against us. Because the enemy, what he's doing on the inside of you is that he's trying to create weapons to destroy us. He's trying to use our own inner being to counterattack our own selves. So therefore, when health problems come up, he's using something on the inside of us. But God said, I'm covering you by the blood. So when I put my hand on it, I'm stopping the enemy in his foot traps. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. How many know we serve a God who never fails? Hallelujah. A God that will never leave us. Hallelujah. Never forsake us. Lord, we thank you. Come on, let's just lift him right quick. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God, just for being that. Thank you, Lord, for never leaving us, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Say he 
he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave you. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. Yeah. I seen it with my own eyes. Hey. I seen it with my own I seen it with my own eyes. I seen it in my own life. Cause he keeps every, he keeps every promise. Never be forsaken. I seen it with my own eyes. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. seen it with my own eyes what God can do there's nothing too hard for our God you got to believe it for yourself you got to trust God in his word and know without a shadow of doubt he will bring you through victoriously that's the God we serve Well, just stand with me as I read the scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 10. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning in verse 3. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. Amen. Your obedience is fulfilled. You may be seated. I want to use a subject today. I was something God gave me when I was in the hospital, and it just stuck in my spirit. And I tell you, when God began to speak, we need to pay attention and listen. Pastor just said some, some distractions, some things that come to get in the way of you hearing from God. And one thing God spoke to me, he said, broken and wounded, bruised and breached. Broken and wounded, bruised and breached. Now, that's the subject I want to use today. I want you to look, look at a neighbor, look at somebody in this room next to you and ask them, are you broken and wounded? Are you breached? And are you bruised? Because God has the power 
to come into any situation in our lives to seal the breach. We've been on this subject for about a month now. I've been hearing Pastor on the radio, hearing Pastor Owens as he stood in the, in the gap for me when I was absent from being on the radio. I thank you, Pastor, for, for what you've done. Because I tell you, I thank God for you always being there when I need you many times. You, you, you always st stood up to the plate for me as well as to be an encouragement and an enhancement to me. And I thank God for your jokes, too, because... Boy, I tell you, I was in the hospital. It, he would call and say something that sounds so convincing. You'd be like, for real? You saw this, this person in a wheelchair, uh, you know, uh, robbing somebody, going down the street? <laughs> and if you don't pay attention and hear what he just said, how can somebody in a wheelchair rob you? <laughs> and you think it's true. That's how it is. But he, he loves to put laughter in our heart. And I thank God. For that spirit of joy God has given him because many times we're going through situations, we get stubborn, we get angry, we get bitter. I have so many different reasons to be so angry and bitter from going through all the things I just went through. Blaming a doctor, blaming this person, blaming that person. And as I lied in the hospital, every time I've been there, three times I've been in there. And I'm like, God, number three, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That just came to my mind, right? And I said, okay. So three times I got admitted in the hospital. Three times I was discharged. That's six, the number of men, right? But then you got the number seven, which means what? Completion. See how God gave it to me just like that? Because that's why I had to think. I had to think beyond where I was. Hear what I just said. You got to think beyond where you are. Because sometimes we allow our conditions to determine the outcome of our response. Somebody just missing where they hit. Sometimes we allow our conditions, I'm going to say it again, to define our response. God said something when I was lying in the hospital this last time. I went in last Sunday. Went in there Sunday um, and I, after church. Went, went out to eat with uh, Denise and Deborah. I call my mom, my auntie, and, and my fiance. We went out to dinner, and I'm sitting there. And I ordered mashed potatoes and meatloaf, and, and I love I love that type of food. And as I began to eat for two weeks, I was feeling like pins coming and going in my throat. So I felt this again happen at that moment. I said, I need to call the doctor. Because this is not right. Something's wrong with this. Why well, I keep feeling pins in my throat? And so I called the doctor and said, uh, Go to the emergency. And they notified them that I was on my way. And when I got there, they immediately took me to triage. I didn't have to sit in the waiting area. I didn't have to wait like most people were there. The room was full of people. But I thank God for favor because I got favor to get beyond all the people, go right in the triage, and be admitted right to a room. Because I said, I'm having a problem breathing, and I feel these pins in my throat. I need to find out what's going on. So I said, God, I don't know what it is, but I know you know. So when they did, they took me immediately for an x-ray, and the x-ray showed that the abscess, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. I thank God for Pastor, too, because Pastor helped me out quite a bit with some medication I needed, you know, and I thank God, because it's something that I needed that they didn't give me, but he had, and I thank God for the connection, you know, and so as I trusted God, the abscess was gone when they did the x-ray. However, the effect I was having with the pins in my throat was from the scar tissue, going through the process of being healed. And I said, Lord, you are amazing. You heal one thing, something else happens, but you heal that too. You know, and that's why I said a lot of times we let our conditions define our response. And God says, I have to change the trajectory of your mind. See, the images we captivate in our mind when we're going through different situations, we allow it to paralyze us, to be stuck thinking about the condition. This is how God told me in the hospital, y'all. I'm just telling you what God told me. So when we let our conditions define the trajectory of our mind, how we respond to the condition, God says when you get a revelation, pay attention to the details. Just because I was afflicted, just because I went through surgery, 
just because three times a minute in the hospital. There were some details in the condition. When God began to speak, since many times we lie in a hospital, we focus on the pain we're having, we focus on all the, the illnesses going on in our bodies, the weaknesses, the losing the weight. I lost so much weight. Pastor God, I praise you anyway. And as I begin to pay attention to all the stuff that is happening, God said, but that's a detail that you need to see in this. I said, Lord, what is it? So the detail is so simple, but yet so profound. So you lost weight. You got all this fluids pumping your body. Antibiotics and steroids and all this stuff happening. But he said, but you know what the thing is in the midst of all this? I healed you. Just that simple. So I healed you. My body, and I said that when I went through cancer, when I first went to the hospital for cancer back in 2016, I went in the first week of January. And the second day in the hospital, my bishop came to see me in Texas. And by, by, this, by this time, I'm going through this chemo. And then the following week, when, matter of fact, it was the following week they came to see me. They came the following week, which is seven, seven, after seven days later. By this time, the chemo is affecting my body with hair falling out from all over the place, right? And I was sitting in the room with the bishop and his wife. They said, man of God, they said, you, you are definitely a miracle. They said, you still got the joy. You're not broken down. You're not miserable because of what you're going through. And I said, you know what? Because I got a praise on the inside. I still glorify God. And I said, but I got to tell you something. He said, what's that? I said, while well, lying in the bed, God spoke to me and said, you're already healed. Your body got to catch up with it. He looked at me and said, what did you just say? I said, God says, I'm already healed. My body got to catch up with the healing. Did y'all catch that? That's some shouting news right there. Y'all should have been shouting right now. Because many times you're going through different things in your life, you forget about the God who's behind the healing. So you allow your, your projector to be stuck on your condition and define the breach in your life. And that's what God said. We get broken, we get wounded, we get bruised, and we get breached. So in the brokenness, he spoke this. He said, broken and wounded, bruised and breached, we are called as the repairers of the breach. Many times we minister to others to seal the breach in their lives and remain a victim to our own breaches. Did y'all hear that? We become a victim to the breaches in our lives and that's the entrapment of the enemy because that's where he wants you to be. He wants you to be a victim, not a victor. Then God says, God says, I, I want us to be healed. But our minds prevent God from binding the brokenness and healing our wounds and bruises and sealing our preachers. I said, Lord, you are so amazing. And as I begin to look into the spirit realm, God showed me the trajectory of the spirit of God. How in the place of a castle. See, follow me with this, this right here. This is going to be good. What the enemy does, he wants to fortify you. We, we can identify different things in our life. The breaches, right? We can identify the issues we're dealing with in our health, right? They become a breach. So what the enemy does, he wants you to be engulfed with a fortress, a, a castle. If you ever watch the Middle Eastern movies and, and all the Roman soldiers and all the Jews fighting all that stuff, what they do, they have a castle where the king is behind his castle and the king has his people in position to guard against the enemy coming against the house, right? So what happens, the enemy does the same thing with your breach. He'll get you stuck in your breach so when God is trying to say, man of God, I got some remedy for that breach in your life. I got the master masonry. I can heal you. Then he said, no, God can't do it. 
mm, he can't bring me out of this one. I, I've been in this illness too long, and, and the doctor said there's no use. I'm, I'm going to die with this diabetes. I'm going to die with this heart condition. I'm going to die with this, this, this or that. And then he says, you know what? I'm going to fortify you in that same mindset. Did you catch it? What he means is when you fortify something, it means you're protecting it. You're guarding it. And the enemy says, I'm going to guard you with that mindset so I give you a trajectory to see what I'm doing in your life to prevent you from being healed. So all I focus on what the enemy says to me and not what God's word says. So when God's word says, by his strength, I am healed, the enemy says, no, you ain't healed, brother. You still got pain in your body. You give your neck, you know, had three surgeries, and, and you got headaches. You Keep getting this pain in your neck. It comes in going. Your body starts hurting. You're losing weight. He, he wants me to get stuck with that mindset, right? So God says, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. So when I get to Christ's mind, whoo, glory to God. I preach myself happy today because when I get the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ, just like playing chess, it trumps the king. The mind of Christ, it overpowers the thought life of the enemy. The mind of Christ says, I sent my word and I healed you. That's what the mind of Christ says. So when I think about a merry heart does good like a medicine, guess what's in the opposite of that? A broken spirit dries the bones. So I don't have a merry heart from the word of God. The brokenness in my life caused me to dry up. The enemy knows that if I can keep you in a place of vulnerability, that I can keep you broken, wounded, bruised, and defeated with a breach. Oh my God. Mm, mm, mm. So it says, for the weapons of our warfare. We all know we're in a warfare. We have a natural warfare going on. We have a spiritual warfare, right? For the weapons. What are the weapons? You go to Ephesians chapter 6, start at verse 10, to the latter part of that chapter, it tells you what your weapons are. And you have five weapons. Grace. The white fire weapons are grace. Because all the components is Jesus Christ. So when you put on Jesus Christ, you put on your full armor, which are the weapons to stand against the enemy in the warfare, which are not carnal or fleshly. But are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So what is it in your life that have you stuck in a breach? Pastor just said it earlier. The enemy lies and camp in your breach. He lies where you, he's undetected. He's in stealth mode. You know how when, when the U.S. send their armies over to seize and fight a battle, they planes they have, they can put in stealth mode so it, it, the radar won't detect them, right? The enemy does the same thing. He comes in stealth mode, undetected into your breach. That's a good revelation right there. He comes in undetected. He sets camp. And he waits for the opportune moment to strike and attack you. Guess what that moment is? This guy gets into the hospital. So that stealth mode, when he comes and he's hiding in a certain place, he said, but then he waits on you when you're not praying, you're not seeking God's face, you're not studying the word, you're not consecrated, you're not walking in holiness and righteousness, you're walking in your flesh, you're feeding your flesh, more and more you feed your flesh, the more weaker and weaker and weaker you become. And God says, the weapons are warfare. They're mighty through God to putting down strongholds. And he says, casting down what? Imaginations. The trajectory of our mind creates 
images that are false. And those images will continue to feed you, nurture you, and defeat you. He says that every high thing dealing with pride that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Why? Because the enemy knows if I can get you in a place where you get lifted up in pride, I can stop your ears from hearing. The words that he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church, right? So the enemy knows if I can plug your ears from hearing God's voice, I can get you puffed up in pride so the breach will stay there. So I have access in and out of your life as I choose. So it doesn't matter whether you have an armor of God or not. His defenses is useless. They ain't going to work against me because you don't have no power. The enemy knows if I can strip you of your, your power, I have to get rid of your armor. Did y'all catch that word you said? If I can get you your armor, April, if I can get your armor, I can make you defenseless. So when I come in in stealth mode, unaware, you won't see me coming. So when I come, I bring my arsony, I bring my army and host of demonic forces with me to come and infiltrate your structure so I can take control of your life. His whole purpose is to control your entire destiny. If I can blind you from the truth, I can stop you from seeing your potential. I said it earlier, we all were created with purpose for purpose, in purpose, on purpose. Because God loves us enough to put himself in us. God put his DNA inside of us. He put his blood in us. He put his character, he put his nature inside of us. So everything that's in God is in you. So everything you need to defeat the enemy is already there. I thought about what you said about the lock in the neck, though. Listen, listen to this. This is something I'm thinking about. So, Papa said to his wife that God put a lock in my neck to keep the, the, uh, the dish in, in place so they won't move out of place, right? I was thinking of something about that. Because if the enemy can lock your voice, <laughs> woo! He can stop you from testifying about God and declaring the works of the Lord. And then he says, not only put a lock on your voice, put a lock on your mindset so you can't be delivered when God wants to bring you out of circumstances. And when God showed me that, I said, that's exactly what the enemy is doing in the body of Christ today. That's why a lot of people are missing the church today because they're stuck in their flesh. And I pray that God bring conviction to all of our hearts, even those who are missing in this place that needs to be here, that God will convict all of our hearts to sin, to come back to righteousness. That we become aware of how important it is for fellowship among the brethren. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. One habit that every believer needs to develop is focusing and getting dressed spiritually every day. Change your focus. Change your focus. You don't change your focus, you won't see what God is doing when God is doing something in your life, supernatural. When God is trying to bring a blessing and a miracle in your life, you won't see it. It goes just like this, right over your head. Because you are blinded by your own self-ambition. You're blinded by your own self-desires. You're blinded by what you have on your agenda. And God is saying today, I come to wash the slate clean. Your agenda, the things that hinder you from walking in my will, my plan, my purpose for your life, I'm stripping it today. Because I got to fill you up with my agenda. I have to change the trajectory of your mind where you begin to see what I see in the spirit and watch it manifest. 
by the Spirit. It's very important as a child of God to allow the Lord to show you how powerful you are against your enemy. We are more powerful than we think we are. So as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I love what Norman Vincent Peale wrote in one of his writings. So as a man thinketh, he is. Because if I can see what God sees, hear what God hears, say what God says, I can do what God says I can do. I'll be what God says I can be because he's changing me from the inside out that I can have a focus on his word, on his plan that he has already put in motion in my life that I will follow the steps. He'll dare for me to walk. It's so important. Paul states here that while we walk in the flesh, we are living and breathing in human bodies. We do not war according to the flesh. We can't fight spiritual battles with fleshly weapons. Instead, we are to focus on the resources and the weapons of spiritual strength. Your weapons are your spiritual strength. You need to focus. Get, get your focus back. We can see God give us victory. No demonic stronghold can withstand praying Christians wearing full arm of God, battling with the word of God, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. The enemy hates it when you take your authority. He hates it when you're fully dressed in your armor. He hates it when your mind is steadfast in the Lord. So the words that be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain because the Holy Spirit has empowered you to stand against the enemy. And the only way to defeat your enemy, you got to know for yourself that the greater one lives inside of me. The word says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen? I'm going to close with that note. I feel God said this to stop right there. But I want you to stand out of the room with me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We praise you. We worship your majesty, O oh God. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You're the Prince of peace, everlasting Father. You're holy, God. You're just. You're majestic. You're loyal. You're dependable, God. You fight our, our battles. You gave us the victory, God. We worship your majesty, exalt you. We lift you up. King Jesus, you reign in power and dominion, both now and forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We praise you for this word of God. Pray your word have my father put deaf ears. But your word will penetrate the core of our hearts to make us think and reevaluate the life we're living. Are we lining up with the word of God? Are we in rebellion? Are we being transformed? Are we stuck in stagnancy? Are we maturing? Or still acting like mere men, babies in Christ. Provoke us to righteousness. Provoke us to change. Provoke us to live holy as you're holy. Purify our thoughts. Change our attitudes. That everything about us will coincide with your word, God. Because besides, it's about you being glorified as we decrease, you increase. Father, forgive us for the times we failed to trust you. The times we allowed the breach in our lives to overpower your word. The times we allowed the enemy to come into our life in stealth mode and didn't kick him out, but let him stay there. But ask, we ask now, God, that the fire of God be released in our hearts, oh God. Your word says you an all-consuming fire. When I say you consume everything that's not like you, God. 
that you burn it up, God, by the Spirit, that we will live a surrendered, yielded, and released life unto you, that you will be glorified. And I thank you in Jesus' name. I want you to repeat after me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask the Lord to come into my heart. <clears throat> Forgive me for all of my sins, sins of thoughts, sins of action. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me. Now fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit to be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You prayed that prayer. You just got born again all over again. And somebody need born again today. Needed it. Amen. But you may be seated. You may be seated. But I encourage you today, walk in the spirit. Let the Lord be your guide. They'll continue to lead you every day in the way of truth, in the way of righteousness, that he would be glorified in your life. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, we're getting ready to do communion. Amen. And those of you that are ready to that's ready to receive. Hallelujah. I pray you're ready. God is about to do something new in our lives today. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank everyone that's from joining us via Facebook Live that you all be blessed. And we pray that we'll see you in service soon. Thank you for being givers and doers of the word. And may God continue to watch over you all and keep you until we see each other again. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to ask everyone to stand. See, the thing is, we say, repairs of the breach. There's some generational things that we need to repair. Hallelujah. God is raising up generations of people that can be repairs of the breach. Hallelujah. And I like that what you said, Pastor Charles, that the enemy tried to shut you up. You want to put a lock on your anointing. Hallelujah. But one thing I learned that when your anointing is covered by the blood, I don't care how you try to latch that lock in place, it won't work. <laughs> 